Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're starting off differently today because of course, um, we're gonna start, you'll see in a minute. We're, we changed the format, but I'm gonna put this up by Lynn anyway. It's the River Ouse. I hope I'm saying that right at sunrise. These are the photos where you wish you could just literally step into it. You know what I'm saying? Love it. Good morning, everybody. Oh my goodness. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you to everybody for all your lovely comments about my weight loss. Like I said before, it's it's been a struggle, but I'm I'm still in there. So a lot of people have asked what I did. Um, I took, it's not no carb. I don't believe in the no carb thing. As soon as you take away the carbs, as soon as you put them back, you're gonna gain the weight back and then some. Um, it's a low carb, low sugar thing, but it's also calorie restriction. So let me give you an example. For breakfast, I eat eight, 10, 12, two, five, okay? So like, at eight o'clock, I have exactly one cup and I measure it out, one cup of Cheerios. Not honey, not Cheerios, nothing fancy, just plain Cheerios with half a cup or a cup, depending of almond milk, unsweetened, which is usually, you know, so a cup of Cheerios and then you put half a cup of, of milk in it and you're looking at, of the almond milk, you're looking at 100 calories for breakfast. Then at 10 o'clock, I might have an apple or a plum or something like that, you know, 12 to, but... I'm about to share with you one of the recipes for something I make for dinner, which is very filling and very low on the calorie spectrum. So pay attention. So this is 96% fat-free meat and you brown it. That's all you do, you brown it. Then you put in one package of taco seasoning mix. I'm sprinkling in. I happen to use also the low, the low sodium, of course, you know, you guys do whatever it is you do. And then I'm also going to put in one package of ranch dressing mix. So we're gonna sprinkle the ranch dressing on there too. Okay. Then we need two cans of corn. You don't drain them, you just dump them. Like so, that's one. That's two. Then you put in two containers of diced tomatoes, which I'm doing. And then one of the tomatoes with the green chilies. You can use different brands, it doesn't really matter. All right, then you have two cans of red kidney beans. And as you can see, they've been drained, washed and drained. And you pour those in. Okay. All right, now after all that's in, you have two cans of pinto beans, washed, drained. You dump those in, like so. All right, so again, that you've got everything in there. You've got the meat, you've got the corn, you've got the beans, you've got the seasoning. And now you take a wooden spoon and you mix it all together like that. Okay. And you mix it. Then you turn on your crock pot, you put the top on, and in six hours you have a fabulous meal. This serves 12, and you'd be amazed how big the servings are, and it's like 270 calories a serving. Now I like to put fat low fat cheese and low fat sour cream on top of mine. So, um, and it's very filling and delicious. There you go. Taco soup, love it, easy to make. Now, I also use an app, I don't, and I, I'm not getting anything by the way for you know giving you guys all this information. The app is called My Fitness Pal. And I log every day on My Fitness Pal. You have to log breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and it tells me my running calorie count, and I always try to stay below 1,200 calories. I know that sounds like it's it's so little, but you get used, your body actually gets used to it. There are times where I actually forgot to have my snack in between the meals because I just 
you know, I, I wasn't hungry. Very odd. I also drink eight cups of water a day. I got this from Amazon. It has four cups in it, so I drink two of these a day. Um, you got to have that water because you got to flush out your system, you know, the fat and the lymphs, and you got to flush everything. So make sure you're drinking your water. All right, so that's a good start. Um, and now we're going to get into our video for today. Let's get there, shall we? Let's go. Let's start off with a few of your comments and some responses. So first of all, Cantra Surrey, or Cantra Surrey, sorry, wrote that she loves the 19th century pictures that I put up and she's a fan of Jane Austen. So am I. Prince William is Mr. Darcy, Harry to George Wickham. I totally get it because I'm also a big fan. But when you mentioned that, it brought this to mind. What has happened to the clothing styles? I mean, I would love to look up and see my husband walking towards me wearing these kinds of outfits, looking all dapper and handsome and all of that. And instead, nowadays, when you see people walking, this is what you see. Like... What is supposed to be so attractive about this? What happened? Ugh. All right, moving on to the next comment from Michelle. Um, the weight loss, thank you very much. And to be careful about if you donate to a charity. Well, I have to tell you, I used to donate online to a lot of charities, and I no longer do that because of Harry and Megan. What they've shown me is that a lot of these charities are very underhanded, and I was actually paying to help support people's lifestyles. So at this point, everything that I donate is local. Uh, my local animal shelter, not the um, ASPCA. My local Meals on Wheels, not the national one. My local zoo, my local, everything is local. Yeah, that's what they've taught me. All right, moving on. NMCN said that they're coming for Diana's anniversary and they're going to go to the Isle of Althorp where she's buried and film the whole thing for Netflix. Okay, um, I got to tell you right now, um, Earl Spencer, the brother, has already said because Netflix asked if they could film there for The Crown and they were told absolutely unequivocally no. So there's no way that he's going to allow them to tape there. Um, and I think if Harry said, well, you know, I'd like to come visit my mom, I'm pretty sure they'd be searched for cameras and everything else. Yeah. Mary Owens put up the comment, why is this a big surprise? They need Netflix comment and this trip will put them in the UK on the 25th anniversary of Diana's funeral, which was September 6th. And they don't think that anybody will boo them on that day. I, I got to be honest, I think you're wrong there. I think people are so over them. I think they would get booed on that day. Just my thought though. Next up, I'm very happy to report that the Duchess of Cambridge, Catherine, and tennis star Roger Federer are teaming up to raise money for vulnerable children. So two charities who have Catherine as patron uh, are gonna benefit from ticket sales for the Laver Cup Open Practice Day next month. This will take place September 22nd. Uh, we already know about the two charities. The first one is the Action for Children, which has had Catherine as a patron since 2016. And the queen also passed on to Kate that same year, the patron of the Lawn Tennis Association, whose charitable arm is the LTA Tennis Foundation. I think that's wonderful. Now, for those who don't know, this cup is an international indoor hard court men's team tennis tournament, which has two teams competing, including one from the European continent and people from the rest of the world. Now, tickets will go on sale this Monday. All right, next up, I had to bring this up just because it was too funny. Casting call for seat fillers, please, in the UK during the month of September. <laughs> no visible deformities or disabilities. Uh, yeah, for Netflix, because, you know, let's not forget that uh, Harry and Meghan were upset because the UN was empty and Sunshine Sachs didn't use seat fillers like they were supposed to. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, now, these articles are starting to come out, making in Harry's popularity soon to be in a steep decline. Um, where have these people been? Have they not been watching the news? I don't get it. Here's an article from February saying that they're slumping, their popularity is slumping in the UK. Here's an article from April. Again, UK popularity is dropping. Now, here's an article from the United States. 
And this was from June. So whoever that is, they're a little late to the party there. Yeah. Now, so people in the U.S. don't like them. People in the U.K. don't like them. They're having a security issue in the U.K., and yet people are pointing out the fact that they were provided, Harry and Meghan were provided with police protection during their visit for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. They had assurances they would be provided with protection. They had some special dispensation, they're saying, but yet they were put in a bulletproof car and Meghan rolled down the window. <laughs> so it, it's there's just some weird stuff going on. But anyway, they thought that the reason, it's being said that the reason that Harry and Meghan only went to the church and nowhere else is because they were afraid. So even though they were given police protection, they still decided just to stay at Frogmore and not go out and not see anybody because they were concerned for their safety. Now with that, Margaret wrote, if something were to happen to them, it's not the government's fault. No one told them to come over. They're not representing the queen in any official capacity. They're on their own accord and they need to bring their own security. Now, with that being said, do you guys happen to notice what's really going on here? They're doing the half in, half out thing, even though the queen said you can't do that. They fly over to the UK. They make it look like it's a royal thing. They are going to UK charities that they're patrons of. Do you see what I'm saying? He wants security while he's there. They're doing the half in, half out thing, even though the queen said no. That's essentially what's going on. Well, then this article came out warning Harry and Meghan that they're going into the lion's dead because um, a royal commentator pointed out that the, the visit could be difficult. This was planned to meet the charities and it is not in line with their original plan to step down from royal duties. They're not performing royal duties, but they are members of the royal family, even though they're not supposed to be using their HRH title. But their standing in the UK public has dropped so phenomenally because of the interview that they gave to Oprah, their, their popularity has plunged. So when they show up, uh, the press is not going to be kind to them if it's even mentioned at all. The press might just completely ignore them. I think that would infuriate them even more. Now, with all of this said, now the articles are coming out. They don't want to create fanfare with their visits. No, not at all. This is a whistle-stop tour. It's business-like. They want the focus to be on their charities. Um, does anybody else believe that? Because I don't. And here's what they said. This is, this is what they said. They said people were worried that when they came for the Queen's big celebration, they would overshadow everything. And instead, they kept a low profile and they didn't take any of the attention away from the Queen. Um, I think it's more that they were told they wouldn't be with the royal family. And so they were upset and decided not to go to things. That's my personal opinion. But they're saying that since they want the attention to be on the charities, they're going to keep a very low profile while they're in the UK because they want everybody looking at the charities. I think it'll be very interesting to see if that actually occurs because that's not what I think is going to happen at all. Now, if they don't want to create a fanfare and they don't want to create a fuss, could somebody please explain why they're constantly putting out these PR Puff articles with fresh details about everything they're doing and where they're going, which I've already told you before makes no sense. If you're that worried about your safety, you don't say to people, by the way, on this date, at this time, I'm going to be here. That's not what you do especially if you don't have royal security. Yeah, there's something odd happening. You know, and then these articles are coming out. People are sick of them. They don't care what they do. They don't care where they go. We're not even angry. They're just annoying. They're an annoying, and I'm reading right from the article, they're an annoying pimple on the face of Britain's consciousness, and we wouldn't care if they never set foot there again. And there you go. I wonder, what do the sugars think about the fact that they call the UK racist, but they keep going back to the UK, and they said the royal family was mean to them, but yet they won't cut ties with the royal family, and they actually name their child, their daughter, after the head of that same racist institution. What do they think about that whole contradiction thing? I'm just curious. And now, you know, that's how the UK feels. Well, let me tell you, in the United States, they're saying that Meghan is now being viewed as a, quote, figure of fun after voicing her surprise that Americans do not appear to be protective or defensive 
about Meghan Markle, which is absolutely true. She, as I've said this before, she made a crucial misstep by misunderstanding Americans' attitude towards Queen Elizabeth. And as soon as she started attacking the Queen, that was pretty much it for her. And people are saying that Americans are fed up with them simply because they're overusing the royal card. And if they want to win over the American people, they're going to have to give up that royal status and find another brand, which I completely agree with. She, When she called up two senators to campaign for maternity pay, she introduced herself as the Duchess of Sussex. You know, when she wrote a letter to Congress, I'm the Duchess of Sussex, I'm the Duchess of Sussex, I'm the Duchess of Sussex. When she introduced herself to children and she's reading a book, she introduced herself as the Duchess of Sussex. They are so burned out on those royal titles. We see it, but for some reason they don't. All right, we're going to shift gears just a little bit here. Neil Sean, who I listen to cited an unnamed source and said that the real reason that Harry and Meghan are coming back to the UK in September is to work on their pending legal issues. We know that they've launched 10 or 11 lawsuits in three years. He's suing the Home Office again for the same thing. We all know this. He said that there was, quote, thorny issues, close quote, uh, having to deal with their ongoing cases and they need to sit down and do a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, you would think that you could use Zoom or FaceTime or any of these other things, but according to Neil Sean, there's the risk that somebody could, you know, somehow hack in and hear the conversation. I think Harry's just so paranoid at this point that it has to be in a private room. Now, also according to Neil Sean, they picked a bad day to come over because instead of a lot of fanfare about them arriving, it's the day the prime minister is going to meet with the queen to be asked to form a government. So whether they thought that maybe the negative and bad press from Tom Bauer's book would reverse all that or, you know, they'll be on the front pages, whatever it is, they're not going to be on the front pages. It's been said it's going to be all about the prime minister. So if they're looking to redo their PR branding and their publicity, um, it's not going to go well because there's so much other stuff going on. Apparently in Britain, the, there's a cost of living crisis, wage cuts, strikes, all this stuff is going on. Nobody's interested in, in watching these two fly in on yet another private jet to, um, you know, uh, go to some charity that they probably had nothing to do with for a year and where last year Harry insulted a mother and her child. Yeah. Now, with that said, we have Pat Smith, who said that Harry and Meghan were dropping into the UK to meet with their legal team on their IPP court case rather than doing a Zoom meeting. Yes, Pat, I believe you are correct. All right, the next uh, bit of information goes back again to that article that I showed you that Archwell Foundation is getting an award for advocating for Afghan refugees. And of course, people are concerned that they've done nothing for U.S., or UK uh, soldiers, but they're advocating for Afghan refugees with money. They have provided, quote, generous financial support, but they're not going to pick up that award. Somebody else is. James Holt is picking it up, and people are asking why. Well, this is what we found. Yes, this is what happens. This is how it works. You get an award for donating money. It's called Cash for Honors. And then you're supposed to come and pick the award up. But that's not the way it works because they're supposed to pay, the company that they donated the money to is supposed to pay for their expenses to show up for the PR to get the award. That's the name of the game. That's the way it works. So because apparently this place won't pay for their airfare, hotel, full travel expenses, you know, the whole bit, the Harry and Meghan are sending somebody else, uh, James Holt, to pick up the award for them. So was anybody surprised that since they announced they wouldn't show up, they have not promoted this charity or asked Omid or anybody else to post and promote it? You know, so uh, the article basically points out anybody who thinks that they're doing this for philanthropic reasons are very misguided. This is a career. This is a business. You can tell. Now, the announcement of their, quote, mini tour of Europe for the few private patronages that they still hold 
by the unofficial spokesperson who claims he is an Omid, right? They're saying that those announcements were made to distract from the fact that they were not bothering to show up for the experience in Afghanistan. So again, why would they miss a free trip to New York unless they had to pay for themselves? No private jet, no five-star hotel, you know, all of that. It's ridiculous. And then Omid laid out the itinerary before Wellchild and the Invictus Games even made their announcements. So... What does that tell you about Well Child and the Invictus Games? That more than likely, they are paying for them. One young world conference was changed from Tokyo to Manchester to make it more accessible and affordable for the attendees because a ticket for three days is between three and four thousand dollars plus your own travel costs. There are some scholarships which are funded by companies which are called sponsorships, but it's a lot cheaper to pay for Manchester than Japan. So I think one young world has forgotten, and this article points it out, that when Harry and Meghan showed up for the perks of the Ottawa conference in 2016, then ditched the event without performing her agreed speech as she was too busy, you know, with Harry. She told her agent Gina to deal with it. Now, that's the kind of role model that you have now coming back to give a speech to these same people? You got to be kidding. And even the well child that Harry attended last year where he claimed he was in danger, remember, due to inadequate security, but he arrived and left unscathed because no one knew about the event until the Sussex PR people told the media. And this is the same event I told you about where he was apparently rude to that mother and child. There you go. Now we know that they're trying to get footage for Netflix through all of this, we know. Now, as to the legal challenges made against them in the U.S. for breach of contract, whether it's Netflix or Spotify, who knows, but uh, the attorneys representing Harry and Meghan uh, apparently have stopped any further action. That's what's being reported. And as far as security goes, these are private patronages that do not warrant protective details unless there's a credible reason why it should be provided. And again, unlike last time where the information was kept quiet until afterwards, this time they spewed it all out for everybody. So nobody knows what's really going on here. All right, this last article that came up basically talks about the fact that <clears throat> Harry and Meghan are literally, um, their millions could go by by very quickly because hundreds of millions of dollars are riding on their Netflix series. And since Pearl was canceled and they signed this deal in um, 2020 and now it's mid to late 2022 and nothing has come out and they've lost a ton of viewers and the money is dropping and they're, they're in trouble. <laughs> they're like really trouble. They genuinely failed to set themselves up as the leading voices of the day, which is what they said they wanted to do. If the docu-series comes out and it it doesn't take off, it, it, they're done. Like they're really done. And when you consider the fact that it's basically, and I'm taking this right from the article, it's a docu-series for self-supporting private jet flying polo loving Sussexes. There you go. They want you to watch them be these fabulous people. And uh, if it doesn't live up, then it's over for them. And do I have anything to say about that? No, they should have thought things out before they crapped all over the UK because now it's, it's not going to go well for them. I agree. All right, everybody. This was a super long film. I, I didn't expect it to be this long. But if you like the new format, if you like me giving you little bits of information about what I'm eating, how that weight loss happened, um, you know, make sure to leave your comments because I am reading them and we'll have to see going from there, what we do on the videos. Obviously, I am not a, a dietitian. Um, obviously, I'm not promoting any specific products. I'm simply letting you know what I'm eating. So yeah, we'll go from there. Leave those comments. Don't forget to double check the button if you've already hit the subscribe button. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and do that now, okay? Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, Rumble. You can email me. And to those of you who have donated through my coffee fund and through the thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.